I think the, the breakthrough here is that uh, very simply, we can now have conversations with data and we can have conversations with knowledge. Um, and that is a very powerful democratizing force because uh, until now you had to be a data scientist, you had to be uh, an, an expert in analytics to play with data and to have, so it unleashes, it really puts AI at the fingertips of everybody. And the other very important distinction between AI and uh, generative AI and traditional AI is that generative AI really shines when you're interacting with humans. When there is some human at one end of the equation uh, because it creates something, an output that is presented to, to human. That is why in any customer facing function, human facing function, HR, legal, marketing, sales, this, these are the domains where generative AI really shines. And, uh, and then the applications are, of course, you know, there are a variety of uh, applications starting with our day-to-day -day work. Uh, I'll give you a very quick personal example. I met the founder of Blue Smart for dinner two, two days ago, and we're going to visit them tomorrow. So I came back inspired. I said, let me do a case study on, on Blue Smart. I wrote the case study in five hours. It's a 10-page, full, full-fledged case study with the analysis and the all the... I could not have done that without perplexity with ChatGPT. I mean, I used a bunch of tools. Mm -hmm. So in my personal productivity, I think it's two orders of magnitude improvement. Uh, and same thing in administrative functions, generating any kind of content in marketing, uh, but also starting to look at legal agreements and contracts and uh, uh, onboarding of employees. I think one very important use case is being able to tap into the vast knowledge that companies have in unstructured data that they've never been able to get their hands around. Uh, one thing that I've been doing personally, I wasn't half kidding when I said I want to make my own bot. I have actually taken all of my product management content collected over 25 years and have trained a bot and we're using a rag pipeline to kind of automate that whole process. And now we have basically created a product advisor bot, which not only answers every question from my point of view, it's not what ChatGPT would say but also they able to give the source references. So I'm gonna embed that into my classes and potentially be a, may be a subscription service at some point in time. So I think that it's really gonna impact every aspect of our, our lives. It's a very secular uh, technology and really brings AI outcomes to a uh, vast population of people who are untouched until now by analytics. So the challenges in AI, I'll distinguish between AI machine learning and the challenge, newer challenges that are limitations of generative AI. So in the AI ML world, you know, we have dealt with uh, challenges obviously related to uh, transparency and explainability of the decisions that you make, uh, bias and, uh, and, and accuracy, uh, representativeness, and particularly when you're dealing with uh, human beings, you're making recruiting decisions, mortgage decisions, healthcare decisions, you gotta make sure you're, uh, so, so bias, accuracy, transparency, um, governance, these have been traditional challenges and they continue to be. But in the generative AI world, we are opening up a whole new set of challenges. Um, and a lot of those, uh, and, 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 and some of those now revolve around um, uh, privacy and data leakage, um, they also, um, you know, have, there's a possibility now of creating deep fakes and very deep misinformation that we need to guard against. Um, and these models, in many of them are closed. So uh, being able to explain how mission critical decisions were made, uh, what, what the training data looked like, uh, that all has to be made more explicit. And, uh, and then there are some uh, whole bunch of thorny issues related to intellectual property. Uh, and, and in fact, currently, just, just a few weeks ago, the New York Times lawsuit against OpenAI. Um, so there are some really interesting questions about who owns the intellectual property and do you have any liability? And, and finally, this is a little bit more futuristic, but the idea that uh, today, all the data that generative AI models are being trained on is generated by humans, but that will change. You know, as you start injecting AI generated data, then AI gets trained on AI and then, and what ends up happening is the more creative, the more idiosyncratic kinds of outcomes are, are truncated and, uh, and that's the phenomenon of model collapse, that you'll end up creating mediocre outputs for everybody. 
So, uh, so we almost need to think about just like we have heirloom tomatoes, we need heirloom data sets which are human only, not contaminated by AI. So that AI contamination. And then of course, looking into the future, there are some concerns around runaway generative AI and artificial super intelligence. So we're not there yet, but I do think that the guardrails and uh, that need to, be, need to be put in place. And we're starting to see the EU's regulation that was passed in the AI Act in December, the Biden executive order in November. So the regulators are starting to get their acts together. Uh, but it'll be, uh, it's a very uncertain and uh, twisted road that we are on. Um, because um, I believe that in regulation, there are only two states, under regulation and over regulation. So we are swiftly moving from under regulation to the over regulated regime. Uh, so there's a huge trade off between ensuring safety and privacy and human rights versus stifling innovation.